Hello, this is Richard Chait from Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm going to talk about resin infiltration of incipient interproximal carious lesions using Icon Restoration, which is manufactured by DMG. So how do you treat these incipient interproximal lesions in permanent teeth in your practice? Do you wait and see? How about active surveillance? Do you restore them right away? Do you do fluoride supplementation, silver diamine fluoride, emphasize diet control, brushing and flossing, or more frequent recare visits? Well, ICON is an option to the wait and see approach. Basically, it's used in lesions that are non cavitated, E1, E2, or certainly D1 again, that are non cavitated. Icon interproximal treatment, each kit comes in a package of two or a box of seven, it's called the cube. Each kit contains a tube of 15% hydrochloric acid, you see it on the bottom here. Then the middle tube is a drying agent, which is ethanol. And the top tube is a very thin resin. And finally, the kit comes with several little packets that is used to dispense either the resin or the acid on the tooth. And you'll see the green side here. The, there's little micro openings on the only the one side and that's how the material comes out and treats the tooth surface. Icon has been on the market for over 10 years and there's been a great deal of in vitro and in vivo studies on this product. One of the later articles was done in 2019 and this was a systematic review and meta-analysis, and it included eight articles. And their conclusions were twofold. The first was that resin infiltration has a significant advantage over other non-invasive preventive measures in arresting initial and carious lesions in primary and permanent teeth. They also said the technique should be regarded as a viable option for treating initial carious lesions. I'd also like to share this article that was published in 2016. This was a randomized split mouth control study by five German dentists in private practice. There were 87 children and young adults who participated in the study, but there were 238 pairs of proximal caries that were diagnosed radiographically as E2 and D1 and they were randomly assigned to the dentist. Everyone received the same you know, treatments of fluoride and brushing. The test lesions were infiltrated with ICON and the controls had mock inf infiltration. There were two independent examiners to treat and study the results. What they found was that after 18 months, 10 of the 186 lesions progressed, which is only a 5% failure rate, but also significant was that at this 18 month period, 58 of the 186 lesions, or over 31% of the control lesions, progressed. So what are the clinical implications? Basically, it's very clear that they have a 95% success ratio of treatment, but also, interestingly, 31% of the non-treated lesions progressed and did need surgical intervention. So what does infiltration deliver to the patient? So it does prevent further progression of the lesion because you're filling with the resin. It spares healthy hard tooth structure because there's no surgical intervention. It preserves the demineralized hard tooth structure. It obturates porous enamel demineralized areas. It has minimized risk of secondary caries in the treated area. Unfortunately, though, the product is not radio-opaque, so you must tell the patient that if they leave your practice for any reason, they have to get copies of your records and radiographs to compare them to see if the lesion does progress. Some of the practice benefits from using resin infiltration is that patients really do appreciate conservative care, and they tend to refer more of their friends and families to your offices. The failure rate of the product is very, very low, less than 5%. And the fees to do this, although they may not be covered by insurance, are similar to those of a multi-surface restoration. 
The CDT code is 2990. It's called Resin Infiltration of an Incipient Smooth Surface Lesion. And the description of the surface is placement of an infiltrating resin for strengthening, stabilization, and or limiting the progression of the lesion. So this next slide is going to show the removal of the pseudo-intact surface of the enamel etching with the hydrochloric acid. The first shows a slide of the control. The next photograph is one of phosphoric acid. You can see a very minimal etch. And finally, the etch with the 15% hydrochloric acid. It's, it's a large etch, and it does remove a lot of the surface enamel, maybe about 20, 30 microns. This is what looks like after the resin infiltrates the tooth. You can see all the red area there. It's just a very thick layer of resin that fills up this decalcified enamel. Let's discuss the interproximal technique. We do not use the wedges that the company provides for you. We found that orthodontic separators work far, far better and they're less traumatic. There's no pain involved. We put them in five to seven days before the day of actual treatment. Using this technique, a dry field is necessary for success, period. No, no alternatives. We use a rubber dam and we try to use these flat pedo clamps or adult clamps like a 27N because most of the time we don't have to do local anesthesia. So when the patient comes in, we'll remove the separator, place the rubber dam, and then we, of course, follow the instructions from the manufacturer, which is the two-minute etch. We rinse and dry and place the drying agent on the tooth for 30 seconds. Then we dry that. And we use a separate uh, syringe just has plain air in it. We don't use our air water syringe for these. We place the packet with the resin in the tooth and let it sit there for three minutes. We floss. We light cure for 40 seconds. We replace the resin packet for another minute. We floss again and cure again for 40 seconds. So these are the orthodontic separators that we use. There's a smaller blue one and a clear one, which is larger. We always try to use the largest separator we can put in there, but sometimes the contacts are so tight, we have to use the blue separator. And we just use floss. And we just floss it in between the teeth. And it's important that you get the bottom of the rubber band below the contact, but the top part of the rubber band stays above the contact. This is an example of a flat clamp that we use. This is a pedo clamp, and they have some adult size clamps too, which make them very atraumatic to put on the patient. This next slide shows what it looks like when you take out the rubber band, you can see the soft tissue is normal because we don't leave it in there more than you know a week. You can also see that you can look between the teeth and you can see if the tooth is cavitated or you can actually feel it with your explorer. And if it is cavitated, we do use conventional techniques and restore the tooth. And this is a slide showing what the acid looks like in between the teeth. It's a little exaggerated. We normally don't use this much acid. And there's a slide of the resin in place. This slide just reminds you, before you light cure your resin, you must floss. This is a four-year follow-up of one of our patients. We have many, many of these slides, but I just picked one. And you can see the mesial of 31, the distal of 30, and the distal of 29 had E1 to maybe E2 lesions. And then four years later, they look exactly the same. And once again, you do have to remind your patients that they do have to get copies of your records if they go to another dentist. Thank you very much.